Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric. This is a mesh fabric with lots of gorgeous embroidered flowers on it. And then for underlining, I'm using this satin polyester. Nice and lightweight, nice and flowy. Good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my front. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have the usual sleeve notch, a notch at the waist on the fold line, and notches to mark my gathering at the neck. And I cut this exact piece out again in that lining fabric. And here, just laying it over the top, right side of lining fabric to wrong side of embroidered fabric. And I'm just going to pin these two together around that outer edge. Ready to stitch. Sewing here within my seam allowance. I'm just wanting to join these two pieces together using a little bit of a longer stitch length. And once joined, I'll treat these pieces as one going forward. So that's my outer and lining fabric joined. Now to take care of those gathers at the neck. So I'm going to run two lines of stitching in between those notches you seen me snip earlier. Using the longest stitch length on my machine, leaving myself a thread tail at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's my first line complete. And for the second, I'm just going to move my needle a little bit towards the right and repeat. So that's now ready to gather down. So I'm leaving my bottom two threads as they are holding on to the top two threads and pushing my fabric along. Measuring to make sure I've gathered enough. And once I'm happy, tying off my threads. And I'll give that a press off camera. So that's all of the prep work complete on my front bodice. Now for the skirt. My fabric underneath is on the fold and I have a notch at the fold line, top and bottom. And just like the bodice before, I cut this exact pattern piece out in satin. And following all of the same steps, I'm going to join these two pieces together. And once complete, this is how it looks. Ready to be joined to my bodice. So lining up my notches, lining up my edges, my fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I finished my edges on the overlocker and pressed out that seam. And now that that's done, this piece is ready for the ruffle. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch on the fold line at the top and I'm cutting this piece out twice. So for this embroidered fabric I've left myself a little bit of clear mesh at the bottom which I've decided to make a little bit of a feature of and not hem but I will however need to hem the lining. So I've cut the same pattern piece out again, as I say, in lining. And here I'm just folding in underneath by about a centimetre or so, pressing into place, and then folding again by about an inch. 
I'll finish that off camera and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length again, trying to hug that crease edge the whole way across. And back stitching to finish. So that just needs a good press, which I've went ahead and done off camera. So now that my lining is prepped, I'm ready to join it to my embroidered fabric around that outer edge. So stitching from the hem on one side, up the side seam, and then straight across the top. Sewing here within my seam alliance, using that same longer stitch length as before. And finishing with the back stitch at the opposite hem. So I have one last piece of prep work to do before I can join this to my skirt and that is to gather down that top edge. So I'm just finishing my second line of gathering stitches here and to ensure my gathers are even on both sides, this time starting at the centre and finishing at the side seam. Measuring against the bottom of my skirt to make sure I've gathered enough. Happy with that. So now to join these two pieces together. Lining up my notches, edges and side seams and stitching at my 1cm seam alliance. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. finished my edges and pressed out my seam. So that completes all of the prep work I can do for now on my front and now this piece is ready to be joined to my back at the shoulders. So on to the back. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, the usual sleeve notches and I'm just repeating all of the steps I followed before to join my lining fabric. And for the skirt, I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece and one notch to mark the bottom of my zip. I've added my lining fabric to both sides. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join these pieces to my bodice. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. I finished my edges and pressed out my seams. I've also ran that centre back seam through the overlocker just to finish it off. And now to join those two back pieces together along that centre back. So I'm going to stitch from the hem to my zip notch using a regular stitch length and then increase my stitch length to the longest on my machine and continue up to the neck. <laughs> 
also that seam and now that that's done I'm ready to add my zip. I'm using a standard conceal zip here and I'm just laying it on top of my press seam, lining up my zipper teeth right in the centre and here just hand tacking the zipper tape to the seam allowance in underneath. So now that that's all hand tacked into place, I can remove those machine tacking stitches which will allow me to open up my zip and more easily and more accurately stitch into place. Using my standard zipper foot, so this was the first time I put this zip in. I actually removed it and put it in for a second time and the reason for that was I sewed as I normally would a concealed zip, very close to the zipper teeth, but the result in this fabric, because it has a raised surface in places with the embroidery, meant that my zip didn't go up and down smoothly. So to rectify that, I added in a little bit of interfacing to give the seam a little bit more structure and support. And then when I sewed it for the second time, I sewed a tiny little bit further away from the zipper teeth than I normally would. So much happier with this. So now I'll come back to the zip in a second, but before I do that, I'm just going to add that same ruffle to the bottom of the skirt as I did on the front. I finished my edges and pressed out that seam. So as I say, back to the zip and I just want to add a little bit of facing here as a barrier between my skin and the zip itself. So I cut myself a rectangle of fabric, lining up my edges right sides together and I'm just stitching right along the perimeter, leaving myself a little gap in the middle to pull everything through. So that's had a good press and now that that's done I'm ready to add it over the top of my zip. Lining it up with the seam allowance on one side and stitching through the facing, through the zipper tape and that seam allowance underneath. From the neck the whole way down to the bottom of the zip. So that's my facing all attached and that completes all of the prep work I can do on the back for now. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my front at the shoulders. My fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance starting and finishing with the back stitch. My edges have been finished and my seams pressed out. And for the neckline on this dress I've decided on a bias finish. So I'm just laying it right sides together, wrapping the bias around that centre back neck edge and stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance. Trying to stick to the shape of the neck as accurately as I can. And then when I get to the other side, snipping off the excess bias 
folding it in underneath and stitching right over the top. So I just need to trim that excess seam allowance and press. So taking off here probably about two thirds. Now pressing the bias away from the bodice in preparation for under stitching. So I'm stitching through the bias, through the trim seam allowance in underneath, using a little bit of a longer stitch length and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the bodice. And now to finish the bias, I just need to take care of that raw edge. So I'm just folding it in underneath and pressing. Folding again and pressing. And because I don't want the stitches to show on the outside of this dress, I'm going to hand stitch this into place. So using a silk thread and a super fine needle, I'm stitching here through the bias and through the lining fabric only. Picking up a tiny little bit of the bias along that crease edge. Picking up a tiny little bit of the lining and back up through again. That's had a good press. I've also added a hook and eye to the back neck. Happy with that. So now that my neckline is finished, I'm ready to add my sleeves. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. The usual sleeve notches up around the sleeve head. First thing to do here is to take care of that hem. So to the overlocker this time and I'm using the rolled hem function with some matching green thread and sewing from one side seam to the other as evenly as I can. I've given that a good press. So now to add this to my dress. And I'm going to French seam here, so I'm laying my sleeve with my bodice wrong sides together, matching up my notches and side seams. And stitching here at about half of my seam allowance. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that seam allowance, which I've went ahead and done off camera in exactly the same way as I did the bias earlier. And now pressing my sleeve away from the bodice before tucking my sleeve in underneath and pressing right along that seam. Now to stitch for the second time, back stitching to start, sewing again at about half of my seam allowance, taking this nice and gently, trying to maintain that beautiful curve of the armhole. finishing with a back stitch. So I've given that a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my side seams. 
same thing here again. I'm going to French seam here. My fabric is wrong sides together. So matching up my edges, matching up my seam lines. And stitching my first line of stitches again at about half of my seam allowance from the underarm the whole way down to the hem. And off camera I've trimmed down that seam allowance, pressed my fabric right sides together exposing that seam edge, pinned everything into place in exactly the same way as I did the sleeve before and here just sewing my second line of stitches. So that's had a good press. Super happy with this. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have those gorgeous neckline gathers. I have my unlined sleeves with that lovely rolled hem and French seams. My bias bound neckline all hand stitched into place. That beautiful ruffle across the bottom. My zip, hook and eye and facing at the back. And this is how it looks on. I did toy a bit with adding a little bit of waist trim but decided it would be a bit more versatile if I just added my own belt. So I've popped a red belt on here with it which I'm super happy with. I'm very happy with the fit. I'm really glad I left the sleeves unlined. I love the length of the skirt and that ruffle at the bottom and I shall definitely be experimenting some more with embroidered mesh fabric. And for those of you interested in patterning, I've shown the technique I use to pattern the bodice, the skirt and the sleeve in previous videos. I shall leave those linked below. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks.